come up. Thanks, Hector, for waking me up. Started his march on Rome in 218 BC. Conquest of Greece, 200 to 196 BC. Economic era in the Roman Empire, 185 BC to 178. Culture and art were the. And get your work done reading the book. But I got an ancient history test today, Uncle Matt. And I got a lot of work to be done. Did you get that wheelbarrow fixed yet? No, Uncle Matt. I'm going to do it right after school. No, you ain't. You're going to do it before school. But I'll be late. That don't mean nothing to me. School or no school, the work's got to be done. And hitch up the team to her before you go, too. Steve coming into breakfast? Not till he gets his work done, he ain't. But Matt, he shouldn't go to school on an empty stomach. He's a growing boy. Growing more worthless every day. Nose buried in the book when he ought to be working. Well, he wants to learn things so he can make something of himself. He's just plain lazy, that's all. Well, now, Matt, that ain't fair. Steve works hard, mighty hard. Now, why shouldn't he? I work hard, too. Haven't I fed and clothed him for more than ten years? Martha, I don't understand you. After all I've done for your sisters often, you don't show one mite of gratitude. Well, Stephen, if you'll take your seat, we can proceed. The door, please, Stephen. She and her father have just come here to live, and I'm sure you're going to do everything possible to make her happy and at home. Patricia, you can take that third seat from the back in the second row. Good luck, kid. I'll need it. I'm sure she'll get along all right, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, I... I... Could I see you a second? Why, certainly, Mr. Kelly. Your algebra problems for today are on the board, and I want no talking while I'm out of the room. Looks like I'm gonna like school now. Be quiet, Harry. Miss Halloway said no talking. And don't talk, teacher's pet. Oh. I want to explain about Pat. She's not exactly like other kids, and, well, I didn't want you to get the wrong slant on her. Wrong slant. In what way, Mr. Kelly? Well, you see, her mother died when she was four years old, and I guess I kind of raised her like a boy. You know, around ballparks, locker rooms, and hotels. Pretty hard for a ball player to settle down. Ball player? Sure. I'm Smokeball Kelly. Smokeball? Yeah. Well, I guess that kind of strikes me out. You have heard of the Cubs, haven't you? Oh, that's a baseball team, isn't it? Well, they don't play hockey. I used to throw for them. I'm afraid my baseball education's been neglected, Mr. Kelly. I'll have to see that Patricia had something about it. 
Ah, you're okay, Miss Holloway. Only thing is, if Pat gets fresh or out of step with the other kids, I want you to give her a little coaching from the sideline. I will. Just a minute there. Oh, morning, Matt. I'm hoping to have that payment for you pretty soon now. Well, I've been waiting too long already. I'm just fixing to foreclose on you. Matt, you wouldn't do that. Give me a little more time, won't you? You know how bad things has been. I only know that when I owe money, I pay it. And I expect other folks to do the same thing. Now, you better scramble around, Benson, get that money, because I ain't waiting after the first. Oh, I'm afraid that's a little speedy for me. My wind's not so good. And Nick's on the Patricia. Call me Pat. <laughs> Gee, it must be swell to live in a big city like Chicago. Oh, it's okay. Oh, come on, Joe. How can you strike him out if you don't throw him over the plate? Say, who's that big goon I had that slapped down this morning? Oh, he's Harry Ames. His father's got money. Does he think he's smart? Yeah. Now that you're slapping down, maybe he won't be so fresh. Hey, Irish, throw it, will you? Hold this. Okay, big shot. Catch this one. on that ball. How'd you do it? Oh, get a ball and I'll show you. Hey, Chuck, hold me the ball. Oh, it's a cinch. Look, put your two fingers way over like that, and your thumb on there like that, and then the ball just goes out like that, see? Oh, thumb way under like that? That's right. And like, gee, I think I got it. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye. over a little. Sure. You sure know a lot about baseball. I never did see a girl throw a ball like that. Oh, I've been playing ball all my life. Here, have a bite. Oh, no thanks. I, I had a big breakfast this morning. is Charlie Kelly. Smokeball Kelly. You must have heard of him. Used to be star pitcher for the Cubs. Oh. Uh, isn't he playing for him anymore? No. The last time Kelly was on the mound, they put four homers over on him. Say, don't you read the paper? Mm, not so much. You see, I'm pretty busy. Well, I guess that's for us. There's the bell. Well, come on. Now, before we start the work, I want to tell you 
the glass. Now, before we settle down to work, I want to remind you all of the basket social next Friday evening. Now, the baskets have always been very nice, but if you'll ask your parents to make them particularly nice, we may be able to raise more money for the school fund. And I'm depending on each one of you to do your part and see that as many parents as possible get here. Now, there are your questions for the test on the board, and I'll give you 10 minutes to complete your answers. So put away your books and get to work. I'll give you the answers. Stephen, I am surprised. This isn't like you. Give me the book. We'll discuss this after school. Oh, please, Miss Holloway. You see, I've never had ancient history, and you see... Don't worry about it, Patricia. I didn't expect you to take this test. you have to write it? Only 50. Why are you doing it? Why should you take the rap for me? Gee, you sure are a funny girl. I have an idea we should just forget the whole thing. Oh. You sure have a lot on the ball, Miss Holloway. Thank you, Patricia. Now you two run along. Say, how'd you like to play with us tomorrow? I think I can fix it up with the fellas. Oh, don't bother. I've graduated from Sandlot Baseball. Come on, Steve. Yeah, Steve. You better hustle out to the cows and pigs before Uncle Matt gives you a lick. Why don't you mind your own business? Come on. Well, uh, what are you going to be, Steve? I don't know just yet. I'd like to be a lawyer, but it takes a lot of time and money. Yeah, college and everything. Yeah, Uncle Mac thinks that... An education is a waste of time. Thinks that the only book worth reading is the Farmer's Journal. Cute kid. Life at the party, huh? Say, uh, is he gonna be at that shindig Friday? The basket social, Uncle Matt? I bet he's never been to one in his life. Say, he's got nothing on me. Uh, what goes on at one, anyhow? Well, the uh, girls fix up some baskets. Uh, picnic suppers for two, and then somebody raffles them off, and the fellers bid for them, and, uh, girl whose basket they get, why, well, get to eat with them. Say, it sounds like fun if... Are, are you going, Steve? Are you? Well, maybe. I guess and maybe I will, too. <sighs> Here's where I live. Oh. Come on in and meet Kelly. Well, oh, thanks. I can't today. I'm awful late already. Well, so long. See you tomorrow. So long. Oh, Steve! Wait, Steve! What's the matter, Pat? Look, Steve, you're being late. It's my fault. And if you're gonna get a licking like Harry, oh, of so course not. Harry was just being smart. Maybe I'd better go along and explain. Well, I'll be all right. Honest. Okay, Steve, if you say so. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.
you. Hello, Kelly. Hey, get a load of this. Lefty Burns goes to spring training with the Giants. Manager Hogan enthusiastic about young Southpaw's future on the mound. It's a great break for the kid, isn't it? Anything wrong? Huh? I said, is anything wrong? You act like you got a bad decision. No, everything's fine. How'd you get along at school today? All right, I guess. Say that, uh, that Miss Holloway's all right. I bet she's a honey of a teacher. Yes, yeah, she's okay. Are you feeling all right, honey? Sure. You wouldn't hold out on a pal, would you? Come on, tell me what it's all about. If you don't mind, Kelly, I'm not in the mood to talk. Shitless, lazy, good for nothing, you. Ah. Maybe that'll teach you to get home and tend to your work. An ungrateful no account. That never yours, Martha. He's to have no supper, you hear? Yes, I hear, Matt. He didn't have no breakfast, neither. What we are about to receive, we are duly thankful. Amen. Stevie? Yes, Aunt Martha? Come get your supper. I've saved it for you. late this afternoon, but I couldn't help it, Aunt Martha. Let's not talk about it. Sit down and eat. You want some anarchy on that, Stevie? No, it don't hurt. Aunt Martha, you ever been to a basket social? Land sakes, yes, child. Lots of them. When I was a girl, our Ladies' Aid Society used to have one every couple of weeks. My, what good times we did have. Well, what all did you do? I mean, besides raffling the baskets and all that. Well, maybe we'd play games for a while, and then someone would recite a piece or sing. But generally, it wasn't long before the Potter boys had been sawing on their fiddles, and we young folks would be dancing. The Potter boys? You don't mean old Ezra and Hank, do you? That's just who I do mean, Stevie. And they was mighty fine-looking young men, let me tell you. Especially Ezra. Matt was always kind of jealous of him. Uncle Matt? You know, I mean, he was at those parties and danced and everything. Well, Matt was the best waltzer in Centerville. I can't imagine it. Years makes a heap of changes, Stevie. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe the basket socials are kind of different now. What is all this sudden interest in basket socials? Well, our school's having one this Friday night, and 
Well, I thought that if I went, why, I ought to know what to do and how to do it. Do I know her, Stevie? No, you see... How did you know about any girl? Now, I wasn't raised with four boys without learning to recognize girl symptoms. In the parlor, on the pie crust table, you'll find a rather large book. You'll find everything in it you want to know. Gee, thanks, Aunt Martha. Look under Grandpa Rice's picture. Did you find it, Stevie? Yes, Aunt Martha. Listen to this. It says, the gentleman approaches the lady and bows slightly. May I have the honor of this dance, Miss Bess? Here, uh, sit down and let me try it. May I have the honor of this dance, Miss Bess? I should be delighted, Mr. Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, that was all right, wasn't it? You studied that book and you'll always be right. Take it along with you. Gee, can I? It's just what I want. Sure. It's no use to me anymore. Thanks, Miss <laughs> Martha. Gentleman approaches the lady and bows slightly. May I have the honor of this dance, Miss Bess? Oh, not you, Bess. It says that in the book. When bowing to ladies, it is etiquette for the gentleman to raise his hat from his head. Think you're going? I'm going to school. No, you ain't. Not after yesterday. I told you I wouldn't stand for no more foolishness about this school business, and I won't. You mean I can't ever go to school anymore? That's what I said. What are you doing with your Sunday clothes on? Get them off and go and fix up them pig troughs. so much to do that I decided not to go. Are you coming tomorrow, Steve? Oh, it's getting pretty late in the spring, and Uncle Matt sort of needs me. You mean you can't come to school anymore? No, I could, but I don't think I'd better. What's the matter with your face? Oh, a branch of a tree hit me. Oh. So, bossy. Kelly and I are going to pack a lunch and go fishing Sunday. Want to come along? Gee, Pat, I wish I could, but... Who are you and what are you doing here? Oh, I'm Pat Kelly and I came to see Steve. Well, go on home. What? You heard me go on home and don't come hanging around here again. This boy's got work to do. Wait a minute. You can't talk to me like that. You get to your milking. Gee, Pat, I'm awful sorry. He didn't mean anything. He was just trying to sort me for something. The big lug. I like to have Kelly beat his ears down. Well, about that picnic, Pat. Could I let you know? Oh, oh, sure. But try and go, please. Right. Well, so long. So long. A fire. Right here in a my burn. Who does that old hasty think he is anyway? Do you know what he did to me? Ordered me off his measly old place. Well, I don't care about that. It's what he's doing to Steve. You can't keep kids out of school, can you? There's a law against it. You said so. And we're not going to let him get away with it, are we? What, are you just going to sit there chewing on that old pipe? Aren't you going to do something about oh, it? Oh, calm down, honey. Who did what to who and why? I just told you. Weren't you listening, honey. Kelly? You were pitching kind of wild. All I could say is that some farmer gave you the air. You probably had it coming to you. You were all steamed up over a guy named Steve and some school kids. Oh, you're all wrong. There aren't any kids. It's Steve. All right, it's Steve. Who in the world is he? Oh, 
Oh, you know, the kid that took the rap for me yesterday in school. Oh. Well, where does the farmer come in? That's his uncle, the old skin flint, keeping him out of school so he can work him to death. And he beats him, too. I know he does, Kelly. The kid had a big bruise on his face. Say, that's not so good, is it? Oh, Kelly, we really got a big problem on our hands. You think uh, we ought to stick our face into somebody else's business? But this is important. Steve's got big plans on what he's going to be. He's just got to have an education, Kelly. Yeah, I know, but... Say, do you think Miss Holloway'd have any ideas? Boy, that's an idea. Come on, let's oh, go. Wait, wait a minute, I gotta get my coat. Well, what difference does that make? She won't even notice. Now, just cause I'm your dad's no sign I'm ready for the wheelchair. Well, mow me down. The country air must agree with you, Pop. What's the country air got to do with it? A man of my age is right in his prime. Look at that, hard as nails. I'm in better condition than most of you kids. Oh. Ah. I guess I twisted something. Yeah, the spare tire around your waistline. What do you mean? Not a thing, but quit holding your breath and go get your coat on. You think we ought to have her over at the house maybe for dinner? We could talk more freely. Wait, I've got a better idea. Let's take her fishing with us on Sunday. I've asked Steve and he can set the whole thing up to her straight. That's what I call using the old bean. <laughs> Should it be necessary to climb any fences? And is etiquette for the gentleman to go over first? <clears throat> and then when the lady is firmly on top, to gently help her down. <sighs> like that. Uh, Mr. Sturgis. Well, howdy, Steve. What's on your mind, son? Well, I just came over to, to see if you had any odd jobs I could do for you. Well, I always figured you had about all you could handle over to your Uncle Matt's. But I get finished right after supper, and you see, the basket's next Friday. Well, I gotta have some money, and I thought me... You can't buy her a basket without money, can you, Steve? How much you figure you'll need? Seventy-five cents. Seventy-five cents? You like sawing some wood for me? Well, sure, anything. Take quite a bit to make up that sum, though. Well, that's okay. I'm grateful to you. I'll do some now and more every evening till I'm finished. <laughs> You're a good lad, sir. The wood pile's around by the barn. I'll do it. Allow me. Heavy? Oh, why, not a bit. You're as light as a feather. Oops, watch out for the water. Wait a minute. A little dusty. Are you sitting right in the blanket? Could I uh, help you to a piece of cake? All right. Nine o'clock and singing in the room. And was she in a church at Bird Down, I bet. Patricia Kelly's. Oh, I love to tease you, Anna. You take it so big, but I'm going to Sunday school Sunday. Kelly and I have private missionary work to do today. Ah, that's no name for picnicking, huh? I'm sorry you had to miss the picnic, Stevie. You know how Matt is about Sunday. Sure. I should have known he wouldn't let me go. But I gotta tell Pat. Her and her father will be waiting for me. I just remembered an errand I want you to do for me right away. You'll take this over to old Miss Bascom. She was taken bad yesterday. If you hurry, you can at least visit the spell at the Kellys. Meet us at church and don't be late, Steve. Thanks a lot, Aunt Martha. Is it? Nine o'clock. Hey, Kelly! Up and at him! Pet, what are you yelling about? Your father is up and out since seven o'clock. On Sunday? Out where? In the yard. Doing what? Well, I think digging worms for bait.
steak and worms. Hey, Kelly, what's the big idea? Wind's not so good, huh? Hey, I guess I'll have to cut down on the smoking. But outside of that, I'm in good condition. Think you'll be a perfect 36 by the time we pick Miss Holloway up? Very funny. As if I hadn't worked out every morning for the past 20 years. Oh, quit your kid. You haven't even tackled a cold shower since you quit playing ball. I had a rest coming, didn't I? Anyway, I'll be all the better for it. Watch this. You came early? Well, where's your fishing pole? That's what I came to tell you. I can't go. Oh, Steve, why not? Lunch is all packed and everything. Uncle Matt again, huh? Don't tell me he makes you work on Sunday, too. Well, it's it's not that. It's, it's church. A lot of good it does him. I know. We'll get Kelly to talk to him. Come on. Kelly, our picnic's spoiled. If you don't do something about it, you just gotta talk to that old wolf and make him let Steve go. Well, here we go again. What's got you all riled up now? Oh, Steve can't go fishing. He's gotta go to church and you gotta fix it. Well, son, I guess Pat's a little too excited to introduce us. Glad to know you. Same here, Mr. Kelly. Hey, you got a nice right arm there. Ever play any ball? Not, not lately. You see, I'm pretty busy. Well, are you just gonna stand there? Aren't you gonna do something? It wouldn't do any good, Pat. It was nice to ask Mr. Kelly, but Uncle Matt has his own ideas about ideas? that. Ideas? Well, I don't think going to church on Sunday is such a bad idea. Sounds kind of sensible. Oh. Well, I think you're right, Kelly. We'll just call the picnic off and you and I'll go to church. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. That'd be impolite to Miss Holloway. But, but we can fish on weekdays after this and then Steve can go with us. <laughs> you know, son, I think you'd make an A1 ball player. You're built for it. I was a farm lad just like you when I started. Here. Pitch this, that mattress there. Oh, wait a minute. Put these two fingers together and always hold your thumb down in there. Like that? Atta boy. Look at that. Yeah. Try another one. Kelly, he's a natural. Yes, I can't pick him, huh? Look, son, every time you get a chance, you drop over here and I'll give you some pointers. And remember one thing. When you play ball at school, always protect that good old pitching arm. Gee, it's late. I gotta run. Thanks a lot, Mr. Kelly. Goodbye, Pat. Hey, he's a great kid. Great pal you are. I didn't even get to talk to him. Serves you right for trying to bust up my day. Now let's get the stuff in the car. You know, the idea is to put the hook in the water where the fish are. I have a better idea. Put the fish in the tree where my hook is. There you are. All you have to do is pull them in. Gee, this is great. Years ago, I was scouting through here for the Cubs. I stopped over here on a Sunday, just like today. I decided right then and there that someday I was coming back, buy a little farm, and go native. Seemed like a silly hunch then, but now I'm glad I followed it. But after all the excitement and variety of big cities, will this sort of life seem pretty limited? Now you forget I started on a farm, and that's where I want to end up. I see. Quote, you can take the boy out of the farm, but you can't take the farm out of the boy. Unquote. <laughs> that's right. That's me, a hayseed at heart. teacher. My, that looks good. Nothing like fishing to whip up your appetite. 
Too bad you're on a diet, Kelly. I'm not on a diet. Well, thank goodness I'm not. Well, you don't have to watch out for your waistline. Hey. Try these. You haven't tasted anything yet. You've tried Anna's watermelon pickles. You know, watermelons have always been my great weakness. I'll never forget when I was a kid, there was a great big Look, watermelon. Look, Kelly, we didn't bring Miss Holloway on this picnic to hear the story of your life. But, Pat, I'm very interested. No, oh, I'm afraid I have been over pitching a bit. As a matter of fact, this picnic was supposed to be sort of a doubleheader for you and Steve. Yeah, but that old walrus of an uncle wouldn't let him come. And he's keeping him out of school, too. And we figured if you and Steve got together, you might be able to work something out. I was afraid of something like that when Stephen was absent last week. Say, can his uncle keep him out of school and get away with it? I'm afraid he can, Pat, at Steve's age, according to the laws of the state. I guess there's just nothing much we can do about it. We can be a little sensitive in that uncle's ivory dome. Sure, we'll stop in someday with a good old baseball bat. I thought you wanted to help, but all you've done is kid about it. Oh, now, sit down, honey. I'm just trying to show you that you don't get anywhere getting tough with people. And the wrong kind of interference will only make things more difficult for Stephen. Yeah, I guess you're right. But there must be something we can do. You just leave it to Kelly. I'll drop in there this afternoon on that old geezer and put it up to a man to man. I don't think he realizes how seriously Steve takes this school setup. Oh, I knew you'd get in a pitch. The longer you know this egg, the better you'll like him. Thanks for the boost, Coach, and cut me a piece of cake. That old sourpuss is just mean enough to keep Steve away from the basket social. Oh, yeah. Pat's been telling me about the shindig Friday. How about you going with us, Francis? Oh, I'm sorry, but as teacher, I have to act as hostess and incidentally collect the money for the basket raffle. Why don't you put a pre-raffle tag on your basket sold to Charlie Kelly? I'm afraid not. That would violate all basket social ethics. Well, how am I to know which one to bid for? Just trust the luck, Kelly. And those that were numbered, therefore, were 50 and 7,000. And all that were numbered in the camp of Judah were 100,000 and fourscore thousand and four hundred. Why have you stopped? Well, somebody's coming, Uncle Matt. Shall I go to the door? I'll see who it is. Maybe I'd better go along, Kelly. He doesn't put anything over on you. Now, you just sit on the bench, Pat, and let me pitch this in. I know how to handle these old hard shells. It's Pat and her father, Mr. Kelly. Oh, I do hope Matt ain't nasty to him. Yes? I'm Charlie Kelly, Mr. Rice, and I... Well, uh, being a new citizen of Centerville, I figured I ought to know my neighbors. I bought the Abbott place, you know? You paid a lot more than it's worth. Well, I think when a fella gets exactly what he wants, it's all right to pay a little high for it. <laughs> I work too hard for what I get to hold with figuring like that. Yeah, well, I've worked hard, too, all my life. Never had time for schooling or any things that kids should have. But believe me, my daughter's gonna take advantage of it. You won't be worth a salt, the man she marries. A lot of highfalutin nonsense, all this education. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess for the most part you're right. But I think when a kid's got something on the ball, it, he's entitled to a break. And my daughter and I think an awful lot of that nephew of yours. No kid of mine except him to marriage. Well, you've done a great job in raising him. Say, you ought to hear the teacher rave about him, how smart he is and everything. Gee, Pat, I'm glad you came by. Hi, Steve. What goes on with Kelly and Uncle Matt? Well, I guess they're still talking. Matt didn't even ask him in. It was swell your father to try and fix things for me, but it won't do any good, Pat. Oh, I don't know. Kelly has a way with him. I know Uncle Matt. The picnic wasn't much fun without you. Did you catch any fish? Well, I didn't, but Miss Holloway did. A 200-pounder named Kelly. Boy, has he gone for her. And just between us, she's kind of sold on him. Well, supposing they start going together, how would you like that? It's okay by me if it makes Kelly happy. I've got to play Cupid for him Friday and locate her basket so he can buy it. Well, how about yours? How will I know which one it is? Just keep an eye on me during the raffle. I'll give you the high sign. Ordinarily, it's all right, I suppose, Mr. Wright, to take a boy out of school, but with Steve, it just seems to me... And that... it seems to me, Mr. Kelly, you're taking an awful lot on your shoulders telling me how to run my family. Matter, 
Kelly. Did he give you an argument? All I got from him was a fishy stare and a lot of narrow-minded bunk. I got a good notion to wring his neck. Let's get out of here, Pat, before I change my mind and do it. Gosh, Mr. Kelly, I'm sorry, but... Well, that's all right, son. If things get too tough for you around here, always remember there's room for you at Kelly's. Morning, Steve. Howdy, Mr. Sturgis. I finished up last night. Mm, I suppose you're wanting to be paid, eh? Well, here you are. <laughs> 75 cents, right? That's right, and thanks a lot. You sure helped me out. You helped me, too. This back of mine sort of lays down on the job when there's any wood to be sawed. <laughs> well, say, if you need anything else you want done, well, let me know, because I'll probably be needing money quite often now. All right, son, I won't forget. So long. So long. Giddy up. I hear you're figuring on going to the basket social. Yeah, what's it to you? The barnyard Romeo, huh? Still think you've got a chitty girl like Pat Kelly. Listen, you leave her out of this. Then why don't you quit chasing around after her? And stay away from that social if you know what's good for you. Listen, Harry, I'm getting awful tired of your loudmouth. Remember what I told you, Romeo! <laughs> for you, Steve. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Aunt Martha. That'll fix me up fine. Oh, well, put some stove blacking on him. Stove blacking? My brother's used to. Gee, never thought of that. Gosh, Aunt Martha, I wish you could go with me. It's right nice of you, Stevie. I'll enjoy hearing all about it tomorrow. Here, shirt may be a mite big, but I reckon you can hitch up the sleeve somehow. Here's a tie for you, too. A tie? <laughs> Gee, thanks. I better get a move on or I'll be late. Late for what? Was you figuring on going somewhere? Yes, Uncle Matt. I... Well, hey, he's going to the basket social the school was given. Who gave you permission to go? Well, nobody, but my work's all done and. I didn't think you'd mind. You didn't think I'd mind you wearing my shirt, neither, did you? That's an old one, Matter. I gave it to him. Well, he ain't wearing it and he ain't going. I ain't going to have him dead on his feet in the morning. I won't be honest, Uncle Matt. And I'll get up an hour earlier and take that cow over to Miller's for you. You'll get out of the car and fix that flat tire and go to bed. There'll be other times, Stevie. Get this. You keep your trap shut, and I'll show you just how this is done. Yes? What do you want? Well, excuse me for bothering you, lady, but we haven't had a bit of food since yesterday morning. Could you please give us a little bit of something to eat? I reckon I can. You just wait here. I'll fetch it. Oh, bless you, ma'am. Bless you. Who is it, Martha? Oh, just somebody wanting a bite to eat. Well, I ain't feeding no tramps. Now get off my place, you worthless scum. Look at here, you old hate. You get on your way or I'll fill you full of bookshop. That old skin flint. I like to flatten that sour puss of his. And you was going to show me how it was done. Wait a minute. 
looking for me, Benson? Yeah, Matt. I'd like to have a word with you. Won't do you no good. I listened to all the talk I'm gonna. Well, as far as that goes, I ain't aching to talk to you any more than it's necessary. So here. Here's the $200 I owe you. Looks like we better stick around for a while. And I want a receipt. Better count it. I might have shortchanged you. <laughs> no fear of that, Benson. You and me abide by the golden rule. We trust our fellow men. Yeah, I still want a receipt. Well, wait here, and I'll go in and make one out for you. Two hundred bucks? Not bad. Yeah. Who said there was no Santa Claus? It's me, Stevie. Here he seems. What he don't know won't hurt nobody. See, Aunt Martha, thanks. Here's your receipt. And if you should need some cash later on, proceed. Why, uh, I'm always willing to accommodate Fred. I'm a bit skeptical, Matt, what that kind of seed would produce. I know it wouldn't be human kindness. Three times and sold to that gentleman. Uh, 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 Seventy-five. Hurry up! Come on! Gee, I thought you weren't gonna come. Here, your tie. And remember, mine's a little round basket. Now, Mr. Johnson, I know you're going to bid 75 cents. What am I bid for this basket? 75 cents. That's what I said. Sold to Mr. Johnson. There for 75 cents. If at first you don't succeed, well, you know the rest of it, brother. Why, your neighbors, here's something special. Here, a little round basket, and there's something special. 50 cents. 50 cents. That's the way I like to hear them bid. Who'll give me 60 cents? Who'll give me 60 cents? 60 cents. 60 cents. Thank you, young man. 60 cents and bid. 60 cents I'm bid. 65. Oh, 65. Thank you. A little action around here now. Who'll give me 70 cents? 70 cents. 70 cents. I'm bid 70 cents once. Lucy, 70 that's cents. your basket. Oh, no, mine's the other one, the box. Cents. Well, it's could you forget it for this? Gee, oh, yes. Who'll raise that a little bit? Who'll give me 80? 80 cents sold to this young man here for 80 cents. Okay, well, get up there and claim it, and you get Harry Ames with it. Oh. Well, this isn't your basket. It is so. Oh! <laughs> All right, quiet, we be quiet. My friends, what am I offered for this? Uh, well, what am I offered? That's mine. Come on, young man, try your luck again. Fifty cents. Sold to this young man here for fifty cents. There you are, son. But come on, come on, son. Don't be bashful. There's a little lady waiting to claim me, you know. Thank you, son. 
Oh, yes, the little lady from the city. Say, friends and neighbors, let's give her a great big welcome here in Centerville. And not forgetting her daddy back there, Smokeball Kelly. Come on, everybody. Now, neighbors, if you... And now, friends and neighbors, we've got... Okay, please. Oh, I am, but, but gee, what happened? You said that... I switched him. And I did, and there she is, friends. Isn't that a beauty? Now, how much are my bid for this beautiful bag? 65 cents I'm offered. Who will offer me 75 cents? Sold to that gentleman there for 85 cents. Oh, my goodness, friends and neighbors, here's a prize basket. And it doesn't look so hot, but dig in. I wish I'd known Harry was getting my basket. I'd laid him up for a week. I hope you like the sandwiches, Harry. I made them, and the cake, too. Who are you kidding? Oh, I wouldn't kid you, Harry. I thought the dear old Uncle Matt had kicked up a row. Well, he did, but I came anyway. Gee. Well, it's pretty tough, Steve, but soon you'll be old enough, and then you can tell him where to head in. Then maybe Kelly can get you started at something. Gee, Pat, since you came here, why everything... Well, I sure am glad you picked Centerville. So am I. All right, now, folks, uh, let's get our partners for the Virginia Reel, huh? Come on, now, gents, get your partners. Well, we're gonna, I don't want any wallflowers. Now we're going to get that. That's it, Mrs. McGowan. Uh, May I have the honor of this dance, Miss Bess? Oh, <laughs> I mean, Pat. Oh, I don't know anything about the Virginia Reel. You better get yourself another partner. Oh, I will not. That is, if you don't mind my not being such a good dancer, there isn't much to it anyhow. Just do as the rest of them do. Uh, I'll try anything once. <laughs> I mean what I say? It's the last beating you'll ever give me. Why, well, you impudent young puppy! Well, get up to your bed and see that you have that cow over to Miller's by six o'clock in the morning.
What are you doing here? I wanted to say goodbye. Goodbye? I'm going away. I've got to. He beat you again, huh? Yeah, but it's not that. If I'm ever gonna be anybody, why, I gotta do something about it now. Stay around here, why, there won't be a chance. Where are you going, Steve? Chicago, maybe. That, that's an awful long way to hitchhike. I'm gonna hop the eastbound freight in the morning. Pulls on the siding to wait for the limited, and there's an old shack there where I can hide until then. Will you write and, and, and let a fellow know how you're getting along? Oh, sure. And, and when I've made a lot of money, why, why I'll come back and... And what, Steve? Well, if it, if, if it took a long time, it wouldn't be hardly fair to ask, ask somebody to wait for you. It is if, if somebody wants to. Gee, Pat, I, I never kissed a girl before. <laughs> Gosh. much do out of a bird like this. That's the easiest 200 bucks we ever picked up. Yeah, but I hope we can get fur enough away before that old Santa Claus starts walking. Oh, there's bound to be an early freight through here. Yeah. And with a bundle of dough like this, we ought to be able to ride out of here first class. Somebody around here. Come here, you. Come on, get him inside. way freight go through here. In the morning, about eight. So what are you doing around here tonight? Oh, I ran away from home. Yeah? What for? Because I'm tired of beatings. Well, if you don't want another one, don't make any squawks and we'll take you along with us. Yes, sir. Steve. Uh, Ain't he back from Miller's yet? I reckon not, Matt. I haven't heard him. What's that paper you're hiding? Give me it. Give me it. Hmm. Oh, he's run off, huh? I always told you you beat the boy once too often, Matt. Well, it's good riddance. I work too hard for what I get. Throw it away on a no-account good-for-nothing like he is? That ain't true, Matt. Young thief. What do you mean? 
mean? Hey, those squeaky shoes is getting on my nerve. Cut it out, will you? Hey, you! What do you want? You go and get the sheriff and tell him to meet me at the freight siding. That no account has run away with my $200. Who? Steve, but I'll catch him. You go on and get the sheriff. I just come from Steve's house. His uncle says he stole $200 and ran away. What? He's gone after him about the freight siding, and he sent me for the sheriff. Wait a minute. You're lying, Harry Ames. If you make trouble for... I'm not lying, Pat. I didn't go for the sheriff, did I? I came out here because I thought your father could do something. It's hard to believe you. You're all... I know. We've been fighting a little lately, on account of you. But I don't want to see him arrested. This isn't a trick, is it? Hope to die. Kelly! What's the matter? Oh, Steve's in trouble. He's down at the freight side. Matt's after him with the sheriff. Now step on it. Harry and I are on our way. All right, and if this isn't on the level, I'll break your neck. Come on. Santa Claus. Now, if you know what's good for you, keep your trap shut. Where are you, thief? Where's that two hundred dollars you stole last night? I didn't steal it, Uncle Matt. But they got it. I heard them say they had two hundred dollars. That's right, Grandpa. We got it. And we're going to keep it. Maybe you'll give a couple of hungry men a handout the next time. Why you? condition. Huh? Oh, you are grand, Kelly. But uh, quit holding your breath in. Are you all right, Uncle Matt? Yeah, 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 I'm all right. And I'm grateful to you, Steve, for fighting for me the way you did. Oh, that's all right. But you better get home. Aunt Martha will be worrying. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sorry I whipped you, Steve. I'll say you are. There's not going to be any more of it. Steve's coming home to live with Pat and me. Are you Steve? Sure he is. And I'm going to pay him for his work. And he's going to have a little time left for education and fun the kids should have. Here's your money. Come on, Steve. Let's go. Well, I can't blame you, Steve, for wanting to go away. But Martha set a heap of store by you. Maybe we could fix it up so you could be like... like our boy. And have all the things that he says, huh? Well, what do you say, kid? It's up to you. I'd better go home, Mr. Kelly. And... Looks like things are gonna be kind of different. Now. Sure, yeah. everything's gonna all right. Mr. Kelly, you, why don't you come home with us? You've never met Martha, you know. Well, I'll <laughs> drop in sometime. Right now, I have a date. 